Uh, good evening. Today we will be discussing the topic of child abuse in Sri Lanka. Joining me is Shanti Vijasinghe from uh, Seekers, the resource person from Seekers Research. Uh, how are you doing today? Fine. Not fine. fine. <laughs> We're talking a very serious topic. Uh, to start off, I'd just like to ask you one quick question. Is, uh, what do you think are the most frequent types of child abuse that occur in Sri Lanka? There are different uh, <clears throat> types of child abuse ranging from home to society. So basically we are looking at the home, which is which we start off with verbal abuse. You see, we are talking about abuse. So the kind of verbal abuse that a parent would uh, put on a child um, would degrade that child. That, I think, is a form of abuse. That's the first form of abuse. Mm. Then we come to physical abuse. It can be from society. It can be from the home. It can be from school, because school is where everybody most people go to for knowledge and um, <clears throat> the offenders are the educators okay. right and the administrators now I'm not blanketing this but there are cases uh, which has showcased a lot of incidents where people where people who have grown up in schools who are now grown-ups um, can harp back to the time that they were in school and they were abused not physically, but verbally. Not verbally, but physically. Sexual abuse is now coming into the foray because uh, I'm not saying COVID, but due to the fact that people were uh, segregated to their homes, most people didn't have much to do except watch uh, go on their devices. And uh, the easiest targets are children. So someone who is not a pedophile can become an abuser. Right, okay. Okay, so basically we have these three forms of abuse and children are the most vulnerable beings. I mean, they don't even know, like, okay, right, you get on a bus mm -hmm. and this guy tells you to come and sit on his lap, right? And the mother doesn't even know that the child is being abused. It can be uh, feeling the leg under the dress or, uh, or the hand under the pair of shorts. And the mother is oblivious. This is because we are not educating parents or getting parents to be aware of the fact that there is abuse at every turn. We have to accept this. And at home, we must know who is at home because sometimes grandparents, Grandfathers, uh, fathers, they abuse their children. It starts with physical, verbal abuse, goes on to physical abuse, and then gets on to sexual abuse. So basically we have these abuses because parents in general, society in general, they think that the children can be easily used because they're not going to open their mouth to tell on anyone because they are so scared of the fact that uh, my father will or my grandfather will take me and put me in a dark room or something like that. Because these things exist, you know. Although we think that the dark room doesn't exist, um, sometimes they say Kalwara Kambare, okay. which is the dark room. Right. And although we think we are in the 21st century, these, still, these things still exist. Uh, is there any sort of region or type of people that, uh, or certain wealth factor that has an impact on whether children are more likely to be abused or anything like no, that? No, not at all. It's across the board. Let, let's, say, let's take the plantations. Okay. Okay? They have an X amount of um, uh, square foot area where three or four families sometimes sleep together. Now, the man of the house, it can be the uh, the, the main breadwinner or the father or the brother or the uncle comes into the house, sometimes dead drunk or on drugs. He doesn't know whether he's sleeping with the wife or the cousin or the sister or the... He right. doesn't know this because he's drunk. So, and, uh, so what, what answers can we give them? When, it is, when everything comes to light, the child is being born and we, sometimes they don't even know who the father is. Really? Okay, and, and this, this is, is not pertaining only to Sri Lanka. 
Okay. This is across the globe in some countries as well. So um, when people live together, when people are in, so to say, like in barracks, then they find that all these things, the children are the ones who are the most vulnerable and they get clustered into these kinds of situations. So I, as an as educator, as a researcher, I always talk about parents being aware, the adult being aware. Because when we bring children into the world, we are responsible for them. We have, t this journey is 15 years. Yeah. Okay, it's not just from the time the child is born till the time the child goes to school. This is awareness that you're giving the child. So sit down with your child and talk about it. If you're not open about abuse and say, well, don't trust the bogeyman or you know there's something called the bogeyman. That was six, 1960s, I think. Right. This is 2020. Going to 2021, things, vocabulary has to change, everything has to change. So um, I think even the fact of good touch, bad touch, that has to now get deleted. And okay. parents have to just sit down and tell their children, you have to be careful. Don't allow anyone to touch you anywhere. Anyone at all? Anyone. Because I think what you have alluded to earlier is that it seems that it's someone that the child is close to. Who ends up yes, it is. Children. I mean, basic, basically, now let's take, um, let's take the neighbor, mm. okay? Um, sometimes parents say, go to your neighbor's house and there's an ayah there or someone. How do you know this person? Just the fact that he's a neighbor or she's a neighbor, it can be a she as well who, who is the offender. And uh, so, you know, children are so trusting. We, we are putting mistrust into them at a very early age. But we don't want to tell them don't trust them, but we are just saying be careful. Everyone you see on the road, you should not be smiling because children are always smiling with everyone on the road. Let's take a two-year-old. He will be waving at people and he'll be talking to them. I mean, that is childhood. We are robbing children of their childhood by doing this, you know, but I think safety is important. Security of the body, the mind is very important. You know, you don't want to be putting poison into them, but you should be telling them facts. So you mentioned that when it comes to children, it's important to educate and aware them, yes. uh, make them more aware of the dangers regarding uh, abuse. Uh, at what age do you think that we should start talking to children about this? As early as possible, as early as when they understand. Especially when they start um, preschool, uh, primary, mm -hmm. when they go from preschool to primary, it's very important that they know. Uh, in some preschools there is CCTV cameras and they can, the parents can watch these things. Mm -hmm. um, but when they go to primary, there are no CCTV cameras to guide them. And just now, we got, I got an update saying the, the security guard has abused three, five, grade five children in some part of the country. We are talking about 10 year olds here. You know, so the mental, the, the, what the parents are going through, um, the question was raised by someone, what were the teachers doing? But the teachers can't be there the whole time. What were the parents doing not picking the children up at a particular time? You know, we, you can't say, well, the bus got late, the train got late, whatever. You have to be there. And that is the sole responsibility of a caregiver, of a parent. And the school must take that responsibility as well. They can't have, they can't have people just, you know, being security guards for the sake of being a security guard. You know, now everybody will be on guard. Thing, okay, so it's very important that the, that the police uh, has to be notified of these things and we need to have uh, some kind of um, understanding with the police. The police reports are very important. That doesn't mean it exonerates everybody. You know, it doesn't. But at least the person who is asking for their job to be a security guard or whoever knows, the, knows for a fact I have been registered in the police station of X, X uh, area, mm -hmm. so I can't be doing all these things. 
you know so it is important for parents to have that responsibility angle the school to have the responsibility angle because at the moment we are all blaming everybody we're blaming parents we're blaming teachers we're blaming society we're blaming uh, we are blaming the governments we're blaming politicians everyone but we are not blaming ourselves if I was there, if, if the school is off at 1.30, I should be there in school by 1.15. I can't be, go, I can't be picking my child up at 3.30. Yeah, because I would be far too late and that offers the opportunity we don't know, yeah, for the exactly. to happen. Yeah, so these are, these are some very key areas that parents and caregivers, society should be really thinking of when they are sending their children outside home as well. Is it, is it the parents that are just generally unaware about this threat of leaving kids longer than they need to be at school? Or is See, it a school has always been a safe catch, safety catchment area, you know. Okay. Like when we were in school, school was the safest place. Mm. You stay in school till, the, till someone comes to pick you up because, you know, nothing can happen to you. But now, today, we can't do that. It seems that we can't do that. No, it is, it, is, it is something that we need to, this is reality. Yeah. No, I've seen lots of people just dragging children from school because they are late for some appointment. But that I think is preferable than keeping the child in school for hours on end. And so if the child is going to be in school, to say, okay, don't allow anyone to come near you. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, stay there and read a book. But then how do you tell a child to read a book for hours? Yeah. It is, it is not practical. So when kids, they, they get together, they play, they use the playground, they go to the toilet, um, all those. So someone with a kinky mind uh, will pick this up and say, hey, good opportunity for me. Is it, does it tend to be children that usually are left behind longer at school or in places alone that they end up being victims? Of yes, yeah. yes, even in homes, you know. Um, uh, when, when there are children, the, have you heard of the, um, uh, this phrase called the latchkey children? Oh, please elaborate. <laughs> okay, so it started in the UK, by the way. Okay. Um, children come home, they find, the la they find the key under the carpet or some designated area, right. and they let themselves in. And they go and fix themselves something to eat, they do their homework, watch TV, whatever, till the parents come home. Safety area, no one at all. Okay? okay? But in Sri Lanka, there's always someone at home or next door. Someone who's watching that the child is alone at home. And if that person has something to trigger off his, his brain cells, if he has that factor, then he will watch or she will watch, but I'm saying he because there are lots of men who are doing, who are the pedophiles or who are the abusers, but the women who are the abusers are on a different level. Okay. They use children for various, like trafficking okay. or slavery. Uh, when I say slavery, I'm saying domestic slavery. Like they pick up children who are eight and 10 and uh, they sell them off or they, or they bring them as domestics. Uh, now, the I mean, about 10 years ago, the government said you can't employ underage children. But if you, if you go to uh, any uh, uh, shop or a grocery store, sometimes you will find kids who are, who are helping out. And those aren't usually the children of those the no, owners no, no, of the store? No, 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 no. So we don't know. Uh, I have personally been involved in one or two cases and I've sent these children home because they said, oh, they are relatives, they are our relatives. I said, relatives or no relatives, you can't employ or you can't have children in your kade, in oh, your grocery store. 10, wow, 12. That's terrible. Yeah, but they said, well, they're learning uh, mathematics. They must, they must have learned something. They, it must have been innocent cases, but we as educators, if we are not attentive uh, because I said, this child has to be at home, not in your grocery store, helping out. You know, I don't know whether I did the wrong thing. He may have been safer there. I don't because I didn't go into it. This happened some time ago. Now, if it was today, in, in this day and age, 
I would have taken it a little further and probably, you know, uh, ask for some help from various organizations. There are lots of organizations. Well, what are these organizations that are usually at the forefront of helping? Um, child Protection, uh, the NCPA, uh, National Child Protection Authority, that's a government body. Uh, so you can make your complaint. There are police desks that you can uh, go and make your complaint. It will take time, but they'll get there. Roughly how long do you think it will take? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Probably uh, 36 hours. 36. But depending on the case, if it is something like that, it would be uh, a, a longer time. But if it was, if I was going to say sexual abuse, or I'm, I'm thinking this child is being abused, then probably it would be instant. Right. Okay. So these systems that are in place are actually quite useful and quite robust in dealing with this. Depending or? on the person who's sitting behind the desk. Okay. Yeah. This so, is Sri Lanka. How do you think we can uh, improve these systems to make sure, that, uh, reduce the lead time or the lag time between awareness. And awareness. awareness and responsibility of the person who's sitting behind that desk. Mm. How important does, do they think that child is? Because when we talk about a child, we're talking about a future citizens of, citizen of this country yeah. or any, any country or in the world. If he's going to end up being abused, and uh, bruised uh, psychologically, how would he end up as an adult? That burden, you and I, we have to take that. End up in a psychiatric ward, become a serial killer, I don't know, there are so many possibilities out there. So when, when it comes to a child being abused, people are not thinking, okay, this is going to be impacted on his later life, no. They're just going to you know, use that time to release their attention and, and let the child uh, find his way home. Mm. And there's no responsibility factor there. It's the parents or someone else who has to be responsible. But the, but the indelible mark that it's going to be made in the, in the psyche of the child, it is, uh, we can't even put it that into words. Um, you mentioned earlier that we need to build up this case of awareness and educating children. Uh, with regards to child abuse, who do you think should be the main educators? Should it be the parents? Should it be the schools? Should it be a third party? Okay, let me put that question to you. How old are you? Uh, you're, on, you're on TV. Okay, <laughs> 25. Mm. If you get married tomorrow and you have a child, let's say one year later, who is responsible? Myself. Definitely. You and your wife yeah. are going to be responsible. But how, respons how do you know how, responsible, how responsibility sits on your shoulders? I'm not even sure to begin to imagine how that, that is why parenting is important. Before you even say I do or get on that poru or tie the knot, it's important to know what kind of, what, what are the challenges that I'm going to face. It's not just a marriage anymore. And it doesn't take long to become parents. Uh, you know, it just, takes, it just takes one sexual activity to become a parent. And then the responsibility is the next 15 years. And if we are kind of saying, um, okay, I need to get married, I need to have a child, I need to have a family, it's not going to be instant. It has to be what we call planned parenthood. Now, this is something very alien to Sri Lanka yeah. because we always say, no, you just get married and have kids. Have get. The moment you get married, everybody asks, when is a child, <laughs> when, when are you going to have children? Because that is us, that is our culture. And we can't, we can't erase that. So are we ready for it? Is the young generation ready to become responsible parents? And now the responsibility is worse with, the, with this kind of thing happening. Becoming more prevalent as well. Yes, because if you don't put responsibility on yourself, you can't really ask your parents to be responsible for your child. You know, so the, the key contributing factor is, are the parents. Now, if one parent dies or separates or divorces or whatever, then that one single parent has to carry that. Entire responsibility. Everything. So it's very important that everyone thinks on the same lines because we can't really push this on to the government or uh, the police or any other kind of uh, organization when the responsibility is us. So when parents place their children in, 
in, at home with a caregiver, let's say a nanny, they should know what kind of nanny or caregiver it is. When they, when they go to a daycare center, they should have the full understanding and the confidence that this daycare center is going to be a quality daycare center for their child. And if they go to preschool, primary, I mean basically the entire gamut of uh, the, the lineup is very a responsible lineup now. You know, so basically lots of parents, um, they, they kind of, uh, they don't want to accept the first years from zero to three. That's the time the child is at home. Then three to six, they go to preschool. Then six to or five to, you know, 18, they are in mainstream schools. So then who is responsible? Schools have to take the responsibility and the parents have to take the responsibility. So the, the first key, the key respondents should be the, the parents. Uh, now when it comes to awareness again, mm. uh, we've spoken a lot about awareness amongst children, but is there, are there any tools or any services that are there to promote awareness amongst parents or other responsible adults of how we should uh, be mindful and maybe look out for child abuse? Um, place. I think all those all those areas are very uh, closed closed areas because um, parents trust other parents so they have their own groups um, organizations are there but we have this thing within us that it is a stigma my child has been abused I don't want to talk about it turn the page and it will all be okay it's not going to be okay so the organizations that are there, like the Child Protection Force, the National Child Protection Authority, these, these people are doing a marvelous job. But it is beyond one organization to handle all the cases. But they're doing a good job. Okay? I know National um, Child Protection Authority is doing a lot. That's a private organization. They, they do a good job. Um, there are lots of organizations like this, but the, the fact is the, it, the cases don't get reported because parents don't want to, uh, want, want to be part of that. So, so when cases Because with don't social reach. media, it's just out there. Do you think social media has been a driving force in actually getting yes. people to talk about yes. it? Yes. Um, social media has been excellent. Uh, at the same time, they have over... Uh, overused it as well you know and um, it's kind of getting saturated now because everyone is reporting child abuse cases it's a good thing it's a good thing but at the same time there are the ripple effects of uh, these uh, the, the, neg the negative ripple effects as well so parents don't want to really uh, say it out loud what are some of these negative ripple effects that can occur stigma okay because we are a village we can say it's a wonderful country, it's a paradise island and all that. But it is a village. We want to know what's cooking in the other house. We are not happy not knowing that. So if my child has been abused, I don't want other people to know about it because it's a stigma. We need to have a network of hands-on network to say a support system. Yes, my child has been abused. And I want that support system of other parents supporting me. Instead, oh, do you know so-and-so's child has been a... Right. So kind of switching the narrative in favor of gossiping behind the back to so talking about it openly and asking for help. Yes, the village culture. <laughs> Uh, so you mentioned before that this is actually a global issue. It's not an issue that's relevant to just Sri Lanka. I mean, top people, right? Yeah. Top icons, celebrities have been you know, have been involved in this. After they're dead, also mm -hmm. we have heard about these incidents. You know, so um, so ch that's why I said at the beginning because children are vulnerable and children are gullible and children are too innocent to trust everyone. You just offer anything to a child who's at their gate like a toffee or something, it can be a drug, drugged, sweet. Mm -hmm. And the child will reach out and take it because he's so trusting. And now we are killing this trust. We're taking away that childhood that he is, he is born into this world of trust. And we are taking it away by saying, no, don't, don't do that because this, this is a drug. 
and we put it in the dustbin or bury it or whatever. You know, so it's very important for us, society, media, everybody to understand who is being highlighted, what is being highlighted, and when it should be highlighted. Right. Not every case in the book to be highlighted. You know, the important thing is the data is important, statistics are important for, for a country, but what are we doing with these statistics? Where are we going with it? Mm -hmm. So many cases not being solved. We have to solve it. People have to understand that these people need help. You know, pedophiles, everybody, the, these uh, perpetrators, they need help. They need help big time. You can't just lock them behind bars and for 25 years and for them to repent. It's not going to happen. That's true. Yeah, so th there should be a helpline, a support system where we help these people as well. So sort of preventative rather yes. than... Yes. Reactionary. Are there any existing support lines or is there any way for someone who would be a potential abuser to recognize that fact and instead seek out help? Is there any opportunity for that right now? No. no. I, I doubt it. No. Not as far as I know. Because only when it happens that everybody opens their eyes and says, oh, it has happened and you know, um, so we have to just lock up our children now. You know, we are, we are not even talking about the, per, the, the psyche of the per, perpetrator. We are, not, we are not thinking, where is this? Everybody's saying, hang him. Hmm. You can't hang people like that. You have to go into the case and you're, this is why cases are being, not being solved. Because the solution we have right now doesn't address the problem. Exactly. So how, how does Sri Lanka actually fare in terms of other countries within the region, within Asia or around the world? Are we worse or better in terms of child abuse? Or? We are pretty bad. Right. We are pretty bad. Um, and this is not a new thing. Okay. We have had child abuse from the plantations, okay, long time ago, from the pre-Sri uh, pre Lanka days, it is a Ceylon, the time of Ceylon. Um, but we never called it child abuse. We have had child marriages. Okay. Did we call it child abuse? No, we didn't. So 13-year-olds were able to get married because that was the time that they were supposed to get married. Now we call it abuse. So things have changed. This, this shift has happened. Um, but having said that, 13-year-old who got married stayed in that marriage. Maybe she was abused. Maybe she was, uh, she was not happy. But now it's a different case. We are having eight-year-olds, two-year-olds oh being subject to um, harassment, child abuse, sexual abuse, all these kinds of abuse. So as time goes on, even babies sometimes. That young, from, there's no child is safe at all from the moment. No. So I'm not giving you good news, I know that. But at the same time, we should work together. Media has a huge responsibility in putting the right facts in front of the people and helplines, support system. Okay. Thank you very much, Shanti, for joining us today and uh, answering all my questions regarding child abuse in Sri Lanka. And uh, thank you for watching the video and please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the bell icon to be notified next week when we have another video and another interview coming up. Thank you very much.